Today we're going to talk about the importance of having a system for weight loss and I'm going to share with you some of the things that Linda was able to use in order to lose 112 pounds and more importantly keep that weight off over the last three years using some coaching from the fastingmethod.com. I'm going to go over what those systems are, why they're important and it's coming right up. One of the things we know from dietary studies is that compliance to diets, and really this applies to almost any diet, is extremely low at six months and then a year, two years, three years, it's just very, very low. And most people think that, well, it's just because people don't have the willpower to stick to a diet, but really that's all wrong. And the reason we know this is that you can compare uh, the 1970s when people still really didn't think that much about what they ate but still stayed very slender and it wasn't because people in the 2020s have so much less willpower than people in the 70s it's that their systems and the environment was much more conducive to staying slender and sticking to diets. I'm talking about those environmental triggers and automatic behaviors. So it's not really just about applying willpower, but it's about following those systems. And in the 70s, those systems were much better at keeping that weight off. Let's compare a couple of situations. Think about the 1970s, you're in an office meeting and it's 2.30 in the afternoon, it's really boring, they're talking about accounting and numbers and you really just couldn't be interested. Well, you might be a little hungry, but there's no food available. So you're not gonna walk out of your, uh, your meeting and the boss is staring right at you. So you just suck it up and you continue the meeting even though you're a little bit hungry. Compare that to the 2020s. Now all of a sudden, in the meeting, somebody always thinks to order some cookies or some snacks or something like that. Now, if you're bored, you might not even be hungry, but you're gonna have that cookie. Even though you know that that cookie's not good for your weight loss, you know that you're not even that hungry, it's just that you're bored. So it's not about the application of willpower. It's that the two environments in the 70s and the 2020s were so different from each other that they led to that change in behavior. And this is true for lots of things. You look at scientific meetings, like the medical meetings that I attend, we often have a break in the mid-morning and the mid-afternoon and there's always food. Do we need food? Absolutely not. You go to schools and for example, uh, the kids will go on a field trip and as a parent, I'll get that notice to please send two snacks with my child. And I'm thinking, why? Are you not feeding him lunch? Is he not eating dinner at home? Why does he need two snacks? But it's so ingrained, the environment is so ingrained that it leads you to make that less healthy choice in terms of weight loss. And it's not because that we're not as good people as the people in the 70s. Let's think about another situation. In the 1970s, people would eat two meals a day if they skip breakfast, for example, which was fairly common, or three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, no snacks. Well, if you were to eat an extra meal on top of that, well, you'd be totally full and totally stuffed and you really wouldn't want to eat anymore. But now in the 2020s, people are eating eight, 10 times a day. There's no limits to when they can eat. So the minute that they feel that they want to eat, they can. Whereas in the 70s, well, if it's like three o'clock in the afternoon, the restaurants aren't open, there's no um, 24 hour a day coffee shop, there's simply nothing available. So everything was sort of frowned upon and not set up for you to just go get something to eat if you happen to be a little bored. So once again, the difference between those two situations is not your willpower, but your baseline systems. That is, if you're used to eating three times a day and not eating outside of that, that gives you that structure that you're going to be able to succeed 
by, by not eating just because you passed by a donut store. Whereas in the 2020s, where all of a sudden people are telling you, you have to eat, you have to eat, you can't skip breakfast, you can't skip meals even to lose weight, you must eat, you must eat. Well, that situation, that environment is going to lead to automatic behaviors in that you're just going to eat because you think it's the healthier thing to do. So once again, we see it's the environment, not the willpower, that's the difference between those situations. What's the trigger and what's the behavior? A third situation, uh, if we compare, is that in the 1970s, people ate most of their meals at home. They almost never ate out. If you had lunch, you brought it. It was called brown bagging it. And I remember in, the, in school, almost everybody brought their lunch with them. So it wasn't unusual. Now in the 2020s, people eat many, many, many more meals out. And in fact, it's available almost everywhere and many times 24 hours a day. So if you're just walking and getting yourself a coffee, all of a sudden you're going to be confronted with not just the coffee that you're going to get or the water that you're going to get, but also all these donuts and cookies and snacks and muffins and everything else. And all of a sudden that environment is what led to the automatic behavior that you're going to get something else as well because they're they're designed to tempt you that's what that's why they have the display there and so on so how are you going to change this identify what those triggers are identify what the automatic behavior is and then decide how you're going to change your environment such that you can succeed. And this is not something that you can just read in a diet book somewhere. And this is why it's really important, for example, to have somebody that you can talk to or perhaps some of the coaching that we do at thefastingmethod.com. A lot of it is trying to look into those things. For example, are there triggering foods? Have you ever started to eat and then not really been hungry, but once you started to eat, you just automatically ate the whole plate? I know that's happened to me a lot. Well, if that's the case, then what you need to do is identify that trigger and say, hey, let's get rid of those triggers. There's triggering uh, foods. There's also triggering environments, such as you get into a car for a road trip and your automatic behavior is to get some snacks. Or the automatic behavior for a triggering environment like a movie theater is to go get some snacks or some popcorn. And again, once you identify those triggers, then you can decide what you want to do about it. And some of the things that's also important to understand is who's going to keep you accountable because this is part of your environment. You can try to be accountable for yourself, but that's just to trying to apply willpower to <laughs> cover the deficits in our environment that are making us gain that weight. Well, the accountability role when you're a child, it used to be your mom, right? She used to say, don't eat so many cookies. The sugar is really bad for you. Eat your vegetables. Uh, then, of course, we all know that you get into college and there's the, the sort of freshman 15 because all of a sudden there's that lack of accountability and all of a sudden you're making those decisions for yourself and you gain all of that weight. Well, that's where, once again, having some coaching or having somebody to talk to can really keep you in line. You could talk to your spouse and say, hey, you know, I don't want to do this, so make sure you don't buy those cookies in the house or make sure you cook me lots of vegetables so I'm not so tempted by the carbohydrates. Serve the salad first, serve the vegetables first. And those are simple things that you can do that you can deliberately change and then build into a habit. So you're always eating your vegetable first before you're getting the, the, the carbohydrates in your meal that might be more tempting, the French fries or the potatoes or the rice that you, you, you uh, really love so much. So those are the things that you really have to dig into. And again, well, that's a lot of the stuff that we do at thefastingmethod.com and that's where the coaching can help. Just like a personal trainer, if you want to get fit, 
People go to a personal trainer because they know, hey, there's not only the knowledge, but that knowledge is just a single part of it. They have the expertise to look into your uh, the, the triggers, your environment, but that personal trainer will also set up a schedule for you. So we'll set you up with the uh, sort of framework you need to succeed. Just like fasting can say, well, look, you're only gonna eat twice a day. Once you have that initial framework, that's where you can build from. Instead of a completely unstructured eating plan, eat whatever you want, whenever you want, that's not gonna cut it. So once again, keep in mind that we all think the problem of weight loss is a willpower problem, but it's not. It's much more likely that it's an environmental problem, it's a problem with your weight loss systems, and that's what you have to try and build and find. Using that information from the fastingmethod.com and the coaching and the support from the community, Linda was able to lose 112 pounds, but also reverse her type two diabetes and get rid of her blood pressure medications. She's uh, had a solid year maintaining that weight loss, and now she has no doubt that she'll be able to continue that in the long term. A lot of the things that she had thought was correct, like calories in, calories out, that it was just willpower that you needed for weight loss, she's able to relearn, and that's great news for her health in the future. Great job, Linda. Well, thanks for watching everybody. I hope you learned something. If you did, maybe share this with a friend. And if you're interested, maybe check out some of my other videos talking about intermittent fasting tips, and I'll see you next week.